Meet Black Agnes, the defender of Dunbar Castle, whose courage defied the might of the English invaders. In 1338, English forces laid siege to Dunbar Castle in Scotland. This should have been a reasonably easy castle for them to take, as its Lord Patrick Dunbar, Earl of Dunbar in March, was away with the Scottish army, fighting an English army in the north. The castle was under the command of Dunbar's wife, Lady Agnes Randolph, Countess of Moray, nicknamed Black Agnes for her dark hair and complexion. Despite having only a few men to assist her, Agnes staunchly refused to surrender, declaring her loyalty to the Scottish King. The Earl of Salisbury, the English commander, opened the siege by hurling huge rocks at the walls of the castle using great catapults. Between these attacks and in clear view of the English, Agnes sent her maids, dressed in their Sunday finest, onto the ramparts to dust and clean the marks of the shots from the walls with their dainty white handkerchiefs. Salisbury was forced to roll out his secret weapon. It was a huge battering ram with a wooden roof to protect the men underneath. But Agnes was ready for this and signaled for large boulders to be dropped from the ramparts. They crashed through the roof, splintering it into pieces, sending surviving Englishmen fleeing in every direction. Winter passed into spring and the siege continued. With the last of the castle's winter supplies nearly exhausted, Salisbury finally sensed an end and a possible victory. But help for the defenders finally came from the sea when Sir Alexander Ramsay of Dalhousie arrived with men and supplies in two boats and entered the castle via a half-submerged, concealed doorway. Agnes even sent a gift of bread and wine to Salisbury to taunt him. In desperation, Salisbury sent for Agnes's brother, the Earl of Moray. Moray had been previously captured and was a prisoner of the English. He was brought within sight of the castle and forced by Salisbury to call for Agnes to surrender the castle or he would be killed. But Agnes simply pointed out that should her brother be killed, who had no children, then she would inherit the title and become the next Earl of Moray. Salisbury quickly recognised this flaw in his argument and let the Earl live. Finally, on the 10th of June 1338, after five months of trying, Salisbury realised he would never quite get the better of Agnes. As the mighty conquerors marched away, the men made up a song. She makes a stir in the tower and trench, that brawling, boisterous Scottish wench. Came I early, came I late, I found Agnes at the gate. <laughs>